Hi, I'm Natasha. Um, I've travelled 10,137 miles and 35 hours door to door to get here for this six minute presentation. Um, well, I did something else too, but there you go. Um, so I'm going to talk about a project I was involved in at the National Library of Australia to persistently identify Australian researchers and research organisations. And these are my own views and not the views of the National Library because uh, I don't work for them anymore or uh, Griffith University. So in Australia, it's not all about features. We do also build repositories. Um, we have about 45 universities in Australia. Most of them have repositories uh, that are handling research outputs like journal articles, but a few are also handling research data. And the drivers are similar to other countries in terms of meeting government funding requirements, providing open access to research materials. We also have the Australian National Data Service, so I focus on building research data infrastructure and ANS has funded projects at most Australian universities to develop infrastructure to better manage research data. The National Library of Australia is in Canberra. If you thought the capital of Australia was Sydney or Melbourne, it's actually Canberra, which is very small. Um, and the National Library is there by the lake. <clears throat> it's a legal deposit library. And it also has a resource sharing division which supports other Australian libraries, um, including the higher education uh, research sector. So in 2010, ANS funded the National Library to develop party infrastructure. So a party it refers to a person or an organisation, and the infrastructure was to develop support for minting and obtaining persistent identifiers for Australian researchers and research organisations that were issued and managed by the National Library and for use in the ANS Research Data Australia service. So the problem with parties, everyone publishes under different forms of their name. Um, in repositories you have a free text box, so that's open to spelling errors. There's no linking to the many identifiers that people have um, in their lives, like the Scopus IDs and the researcher IDs, and hopefully the ORCID IDs too. So the solution we looked at, the National Library of Australia developed Trove, which is an online discovery service that aggregates metadata from a number of contributing sources. The biggest traffic in Trove is actually people searching the newspapers because of the newspaper digitisation project, but there are a whole range of zones that reflect different discoveries <coughs> within Trove, and one of those is the Trove People and Organisations Zone. It currently has 900,000 records and it was seeded by records from the Australian Name Authority file, which is contributed to by um, all Australian libraries. And the type of info you can see in there is biographical, related people and organisations, publications and that sort of thing. So under the hood, the record structure, this is an example, you have one assistant <coughs> NLA, that's the National Library Party um, identifier, and then underneath that you have three different records from contributing organisations, each with their own local ID. So you can see it acts as an identity resolution service and co-locates those records. So there'll be a test on this diagram afterwards, so I hope you're all looking and understanding really quickly in 20 seconds what it is. Um, but basically, OAI PMH harvesting of records into the National Library, an automatic matching process to see whether your incoming records match anything in the party infrastructure. If they do, it automatically gets assigned the NLA persistent identifier, and if it doesn't, it goes to TIM, which is the Trove Identities Manager. That's an online um, system where uh, people can go in and manage, manage their records, create new identities. Um, it's a tool for disambiguation <coughs> so that you get just the one persistent identifier for the one person or organisation record. The party infrastructure project was extending Trove to the research sector. So the ways that we did that um, was that providing support for institutions to provide records to the National Library in RIF CS form, <coughs> which is the data format preferred by the Australian National Data Service, and also to allow institutions to manage their own records in the Trove Identity Centre. <coughs> so the first phase of the project, we had community consultation, so we ran a survey to see what names data people had. We had a names roundtable to discuss the project, an advisory group from um, research organisations in the sector, and we had an early implementers group to, to prove uh, the proof of concept, basically. Uh, so we had some success so we had one of the records for but that quotes the party uh, identifier in the ANS Research Data Australia service. And the National Library currently is working with 22 institutions to use the party identifier. So by the end of the uh, by the end of the year, more than half of Australian research institutions will be using the service. So the projects face some challenges. Challenge one, names aren't easy. Ben along, Indigenous Australian, no surname, no birthday, unknown birth date, no publications. Captain Cook, 
He's not Australian, but should he be in an Australian service? Yes, I would say yes. We sort of claim him as our own. <laughs> Challenge two, names data is privacy issues. So individuals have a lot of concerns, particularly the one about making their fragmented identity into a whole. I blog here, I write an article there, I don't want it all together in the one interface. Um, institutions have concerns. I think most institutions can't provide birth dates to the party infrastructure, but there's an opt-out option if people are worried about their privacy. There was a chicken and egg problem, so a number of projects running in parallel, including the Orchid project and a number of ANS projects, which means that probably all the requirements didn't come through and are actually going to come through as people really start using the infrastructure and as they really test the workflows on a large scale. Lessons, you need more than just carrots. Um, we didn't have publisher buy-in, and that would have guaranteed people to use it. Without that, you actually need sticks, something that ties people into the project deliverables, um, because they <coughs> need to promote the big picture. People have to invest time into this, so there's, there's a bit of a sell involved, and that wasn't part of the project funding. Lesson two, um, we spent a lot of time developing the Trove Identities Manager, which is used for hand matching and author disambiguation but we probably should have put it into developing a better API. So people can get their data through APIs like, the, well, they can get it through OAI, PMH, and an SIU interface, but we really need a very quick find and get uh, functionality in the API. It's, it's finally finished, now let's begin. People are using it, so there's a need for ongoing support for the project, training, that's, that kind of thing, and that's where the effort needs to go now. So, thank you.